Good evening and welcome back to Spontaan Jesus the Reason on Waterberg Stereo. I do hope that you enjoy that music and uh, to our, our viewers on Facebook, good evening and welcome. And uh, go check out our webpage spontaan.webs.com and uh, you can send a message to us there. Any prayer requests, you are welcome. Tonight I'm going to talk about the secret to get real happiness, to, re to experience real joy. In life. Um, I've spoken to a lot of people during uh, the past couple of weeks and most of them said listen I've got everything I've got a fancy car I've got money I've got a beautiful wife beautiful children but I just can't seem to find happiness I just keep, can't get to a point where I can say I've got it all and my life is fulfilled and uh, I've been praying about this because uh, even I feel like that sometimes. Even I feel sometimes that there is something short in my life. That there must be more. And uh, the more I, I spend time with God and the more I spend time in the world, in the Word of God, the less I feel like that. And if I have a hectic week and I had to cut my, my, uh, my bread time short, I feel, listen, there is something missing. There is something wrong. And that's where... Uh, I, that was my starting point. And uh, I'm going to read Psalm 1. And I think this is the, the uh, passage in the Bible that really explains joy to the fullest. That really gives us the secret how to receive the joy of the Lord. <clears throat> it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season, their leaves never wither, and they pro prosper in all they do. So if you really have a relationship with the Lord, and you really study His word, then you are like a tree that's planted next to a stream. Now, you are if you really are in Christ, then you are connected to the life-giving, joy-bringing stream. And if you are rooted thoroughly in this life-giving joy bringing stream then your joy will be fulfilled but then you need to understand that there are some things that needs to change if you need advice you need to go to the word of god you need to go to children of god for advice you need to start distancing you from the world and you need to start drawing closer to god and to jesus christ and really, really make that change. That the word of God and a relationship with Christ is more important than any of the joys the world can give you. You need to start looking for your joy in God. And then in verse 6 of Psalm 1 it says, For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. And you need to choose a path. You need to choose whether you are going to experience real fulfillment or are you are going to live with the, em the emptiness that the joys of this world bring you. The joy of the, of the Lord brings true happiness, brings true fulfillment. But the joy that you experience in worldly things is only temporary and you need more and more and more. In Psalm 34 is one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible. It says, Taste and see the Lord is good. O oh, the joys of those who take refuge in Him. You have to take refuge in God. God should be your answer for every single trouble that you go in. 
Fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all the all they need. If you fear the Lord, if the Lord is your joy, then you will have all you need. That's something the world can never give you. There is a peace, a fulfillment that you will never find in any of the joys of the world. You need to start looking for your joy in a different place. In the word of God, according to Psalm 1. And you need to taste the goodness of the Lord. You have to try living the life He wants you to. You need to try it. Because then you can taste and see how good God is. Proverbs 16 says something that had me thinking. It says, for the respondent... Every day brings trouble. If you are always negative, every day will just bring new trouble and more trouble and more trouble. For the happy heart, life is a continual feast. If you are always happy, if you really experience your joy in the Lord, then, you, then life will be a feast. If you are going through a difficult time and you can still tap into that water stream, Jesus Christ, that you are, you, that you are connected to, then your difficult circumstances will not quench the joy that you will have and you will continually have a happy heart. And if you have a happy heart, if you are always happy, always joyful, then you will always, always live a feast. But then there's something that might me think even more. He said, better to have little with fear for the Lord than to have great treasure and inner turmoil. I speak to a lot of people who, who, who tells me, and a long time ago I was the same way, that there's always conflict inside of you. There's always turmoil. It's like you can never get any rest. You go lie on, the, lie on the bed, close your eyes, but not even then do you get rest. There's always conflict inside. There's always turmoil inside. And so many times it, it, it's people who have a lot and who, who are so worried that they will lose the things that they have that they never find any peace. But the minute you realize that the only thing you really need is God and your relationship with Him, and the only thing you must really strive for is to build the kingdom of God, and then all the other things will come from itself. If you shift your focus from the worldly to the godly, your whole world will change. But we are trying to live by the laws of the world. The laws of the world measure success in how much you have in your bank account, how many bedrooms and bathrooms you have in your house, how many, how grand and how new you, the car that you drive. Um, that's how the world measures success. And unfortunately, so does the church today. We need to start measuring success the way God measures success. And that is, are you living a fulfilled, blessed life? Or are you sitting empty in a house full of worldly riches? That's where you have to draw the line. God wants to bless us, our people. God doesn't want us to lack. But God wants to see that He is our first priority. And wealth is our second priority. Or third or fifth. In my case, I don't even think He's got a priority. 
As long as I have Jesus, I have all that I need. And that's the way he wants us to live. That's the way he wants us to experience joy. The world see a good job with a good salary as security. But so easily you can lose that. And I think it's been proven during this time of COVID-19. So easily it can be taken away from you. And if, you're, if, if worldly things is your security and it's taken away from you, you have nothing left. But if God is your security and your wealth is taken away, you have lost nothing. Because the most important thing is God. And part of the joy of the Lord is giving. Part of the joy of the Lord is giving to others. Part of the joy of the Lord is sowing into his kingdom. And I'm not somebody who preached this prosperity uh, teachings. But I do believe that every single verse in the word of God is there to help us to live a fulfilled life in Christ. And part of that fulfilled life is giving. And every time the Bible speaks about giving, it speaks about, it gives a promise as well. So, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly, reluctantly or in response of pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. You need to realize that everything you have, your great, grand, brilliant job, that make it possible for you to afford whatever you have, is a blessing from God. It's an opportunity given to you from God. And what you earn is from God. And if you are willing to share that, then God is willing to give more. And that's what the Bible says. And then your joy will be even more. And that's a biblical concept that we cannot live around. But we need to, if we really want to be joyful in the Lord, we need to know how to get there. And the first thing is to make the Lord your number one priority. Is to choose carefully with who you mix. And to really spend time in the word of God. To meditate on the word of God. To understand the word of God. And to let the Holy Spirit guide your, our lives. Over the past few weeks we've spoke a lot about let the Holy Spirit determine your lifestyle. Let the, the Holy Spirit determine your choices. We spoke a lot about that. And to really live a fulfilled, joyful life, that's some of the things that we really need to understand. And we need to understand the power there is if we give freely. <clears throat> okay, for a minute there, I've, I've lost my way now, so let me just get to the next, uh, next Bible verse. I want you to, to turn to 1 Peter from verse 5. And through your faith, God is protecting you by His power until you receive the salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. And through your faith, you need to have faith. You need to know that when you ask something of God or you need to know when you go into difficult circumstances, that God is already there. And then it says, So be truly glad. Be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. So when you go to difficult circumstances, when you're going through a difficult time in your life, remember this. There is wonderful joy ahead. Don't lose your joy. But be glad, because you know the outcome. 
These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as a fire test and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor. And the, on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world, you love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with glorious, unexpressible joy. So if you really trust in Jesus, even though you cannot see him, even though you cannot see what is, what is happening, you will tr truly experience in inexpressible joy if you are really uh, trusting in God. If Jesus are really the reason why you get up in the morning. If you stay away from people that can bring you down. If you stay away from negative people. From people who, who are always moaning. And you are getting to a point where you are always cheerful. No matter what your circumstances is. You can really. And I'm going to read it again. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with glorious, inexpressible joy. My fav One of my favorite texts in the book of Acts is where Paul and Silas were in, the, in jail. They were beaten, their backs were bleeding and they were thrown in a cell chained in a cell <clears throat> but they were singing and praising and glorifying God and what happened what happened under the, pra the, the praises the jail the earth shook the earth started shaking the chains fell off and the and the the doors of their cell were open. Because the minute that you rejoice, no matter how difficult your circumstances, no matter how much you are hurting, it's when you are set free from being, uh, that's when you are being set free from what is holding you back. That is when the jail opens. That is when the chains fall off from you. So it's so important that we know that um, if we experience and we praise God, even how in the most dire circumstances, God will come through for you. Because His praise releases blessings. It releases joys. And it breaks chains. That's why it's so important for us. To know this, to know that God wants you to be joyful. God wants you to experience His joy. <clears throat> In James 5, verse 13, is the verse that teaches us what to do in difficult circumstances. In sad circumstances, it says, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praise. So when you are down, when you are tearful, when you are sad, you need to pray. And the minute you start experiencing joy again, and the minute you are getting your happiness back, you should praise Him. You should praise Him. Philippians 4 Always be full of joy in the Lord. Yes, I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. And then it says again, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. 
Tell God what you need, what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. You need to live in Christ Jesus. You need to give all your worries to God in prayer and with thanks. And always be full of joy for the Lord. Always. And that seems you are sitting there listening and uh, listening to me saying, Bakis, you don't know what I'm going through. I had my trials, still have. But I really learned to believe what the Bible says, to do what the Bible says. Is my life easier? Not really. It's just easier to cope. And the minute you start speaking the positive, positive start happening. If something gets taken away, I start rejoicing the Lord because I know that what He is sending is so much bigger than that, that I have lost. And that's how we are really going to experience joy. Because that's what the Bible teaches us. It's easy to, to uh, believe what the media say. It's easy to do things because the media say this. Now we need to go out and buy bucky loads of toilet paper. <clears throat> the Bible say, say, pray, believe, be joyful, study the word of God. Why can't we do that as diligently as we do other things to survive? Because if we do this, we will know how. We will be protected. But the thing is, do you really believe that? Do you really believe that God will come through for you? Or are you just saying you believe? Are you really dependent on God or are you dependent on your job or your bank account or anything else? Where is your security? Jesus said in John 14 verse 1 Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. We need to start believing what we read in the Bible and start questioning the wisdom of the world and start questioning things the world deem important. We need to start to believe what the Bible says important then we will experience real joy let's pray heavenly father thank you for your grace your mercy and your love thank you for opening your word uh, to us so that we can understand what your heart is and how to receive the joy that nobody can explain father be with us during this week father and i ask you to protect us and to protect every person during this difficult time that we are going through in the, right all over the world right now. And I want to ask you, Father, to bless every single listener tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember to check out our website, spontan.webs.com. You can check out, you can send us a message there as well. God bless you.